Hey everybody, it's Mike Frieder here with On Call Compliance Solutions and I'm back with another compliance tip of the week. Today we're going to expand a little bit on the whole evidence gathering process included in the newly released draft CMMC assessment process or CAP because everybody needs a cool word for anything that has a bunch of words in it. CAP. CMMC assessment process. Why wouldn't it be the CMMC app? I don't know. Anyway, in one of our earlier videos, we talked about the three methods that will be used during the whole assessment process. By the, so uh, let's dive a little deeper. Okay, uh, we talked about the three methods that are going to be used during the whole assessment uh, process, and um, and now we're going to talk a little bit more about the subject of examining and analyzing evidence as set out by the Cyber AB in the CAP draft document or CMMC app, CM, whatever. So let me give you the standard disclaimer here. It's all from the draft, and we're just really kind of coming and giving it to you early. So don't blame us. So the assessor will be examining evidence to gain detailed insight about the practices implemented by your team and how those practices are going to be performed. As part of the process, your team should be ready to provide a current and organized list of your evidence and process mappings from any internal or third-party gap analysis as well as from the readiness review results. So hang on, let me read that one more time. So what they're saying is, show me your underwear. I'm pretty sure that's what that is, right? So basically what it means is they want you to show the assessor any of the things that you've already found to be a problem so that the assessor will essentially sort of have a head start on what they need to go and look for to see if you fixed. So look, for each relevant practice in the CMSC model, C3PAO assessment team is going to review and collect evidence to demonstrate that the practice that is being performed is effectively implemented and conforms to CMMC standard. Why are they asking you to do this? I'm actually not really sure. I can't imagine they could make you do that. It's like pleading the fifth, but um, you know, ultimately my guess would be that if you already know where the gaps are, you can point them out to the assessors and say, hey, look, here's the gaps, here's how we fixed them. Maybe the rest of, of the whole assessment might be a little easier, but it seems like me like they've still got to assess it anyway. So I'm not really sure why it is. It's kind of an interesting thought, um, but you know, just hope you don't have any stains. Anyway, so I got to talk to my editor about doing these fonts and like 10 point font and a teleprompter, Jesus. Okay, all right, we'll go for it. Anyway, so let me give you a little cheat sheet here uh, while I, while I uh, wish that I had some glasses on. Uh, so, so it's like a bad game. I think they actually try to play pranks with me to just see if I'll directly read what's on the teleprompter, like Ron Burgundy style, and just see what on earth comes out because I will read it and then we'll make a joke about it together. And we'll laugh about it. If you think it's funny, put a comment below. All right, I got him. I got him laughing. He's done. This video is totally screwed up now. So uh, the assessment team will be looking for the list of evidence to be examined during phase one of the process. So here, where preparation on your part and cooperation with your IT guy are critical because that list is going to be used to coordinate the collection of the evidence for examination. So again, remember, I know we've talked about a whole bunch in previous videos, but you got to make sure your relationship with your IT guys is good. You got to remember, you know, they're going to need to be DFARS compliant too, generally speaking, unless, uh, you know, they have... Again, depending upon the level of access they have to your system, whether they're using their systems to, to you know, manage you and things like that. The assessment team is well aware that evidence artifacts might not necessarily have a one-to-one -one relationship with CMMC practices. So it's possible for multiple artifacts to be required. Yikes. Like 110 controls weren't enough. Okay, I don't know. Interestingly, an off-color comment is that I have spoken numerous times previously with some of our preferred C3PAOs and they've told me, hey, look, the evidence gathering used to be this big, huge activity, but then they were like, that's not going to work. So the total number of pieces of evidence was somewhere around like 30 things they had to look for. So it's interesting to me that the CMMC calls it out. I think it's probably more of a CYA statement. You can read between the lines, but nonetheless, that's what they said. So the assessment team is also being directed by the, the, the CAP. CMMC app or whatever, to evaluate any evidence based on the assessment objectives defined in the CMMC level two assessment guide, when or if that gets finalized. Does it really say when or if? Like did the CMMC publish a document that says when or if? I, yeah, yeah, probably they did. That sounds about right. Uh, again, don't get me wrong, love the CMMC. B hey, listen, if you're reading this and you're one of my boys from the Cyber AB, love you. All right, it's all good. You write this stuff, I just read it, okay? <laughs> Finalist, and made public, you should get yourself a copy of it. We will post it here 
uh, if or when possible. I totally believe that's in that document. For any of your recently implemented practices, this gets better, man. This is YouTube quality stuff. Uh, the implementation should demonstrate that the practices and or procedures will show sufficient confidence to support the determination that the CUI protection requirements have been met. If I wanted to be a comedian, I would just read the CMMC app. That's all I would do. The assessment team is also going to ensure that the evidence artifact being examined is current and that it, has, it was produced by the same individuals who are performing, implementing, or supporting the work. What happens if they got fired? I don't know. What happens if they got fired? Anyway. So here you go again. Uh, get prepared. Dot all your I's, cross all your T's, and don't forget the squiggly little Q's either because they make perfect sense. Just like, just like this. <laughs> Lastly, your policies, got them again. Lastly, your policies and procedures must demonstrate deployment and adoption by your team. So if I've said it before, I'll say it again. I don't know how it will work out in real life, but it seems to me that preparation and cooperation are going to be key factors in preparing for the CMMC assessment process. I think that seems pretty obvious, right? I mean, I guess you can go in unprepared and see how it goes. Anyway, some people like to take expensive risks. There's no doubt that assessment will be intensive, thorough, and a lot of work to complete. Does it really? I think it says that in there, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. how, it really it says that. Man, it's like like a like a what you, a, a root canal. Page 21. Yeah, that's it. Page 21. He says. However, overall, the process seems more doable than ever. I'm sure. Uh, which is a welcome evolution. Another reminder that this information is coming out of a draft document and likely will be updated. <laughs> so I'm sure the finished products can be ordered just like this. What's important here is understanding the Cyber AB's CMMC certification process or Cyber AB's CMMC app process, intent, and aligning the activities you are doing on a daily basis with it and all of the syllables in those words. So, hey, if you think this is as fun as we do, or if you're just trying to get compliant with DFARS, NIST SB 101 or CMMC on your own, the good news is I'm pretty sure we understand it better <laughs> than they do. And if you're looking for help, our compliance experts are always on call for you and way more professional than I'm being in this video. So visit NIST800171Compliance.com or check out the bio below for links that'll make your life easy. There you can find more information about how we can help self-schedule time at your convenience with one of our compliance experts, someone who's far more professional than I am, and lose my place through any form on the website or learn more about our completely done-for-you services that can have you on your way to being compliant in just two to three days. If you love the content we're putting out here for you, take a wild guess about what I'm going to say next. You'll never guess it. Help us out with a big thumbs up on that like button. It makes my day. Every time someone hits the like button, my camera guy comes and runs into my office. He goes, dude, we got another like. And I'm like, yeah, break out the champagne. It's the like button drinking game. You know it. We love to play it. Or even better, smash the subscribe button to get the latest compliance content as soon as our compliance nerds roll it out. It's a great way to stay prepared for that upcoming CMC certification. Everybody's going to have to eventually go through it. And until the next compliance tip, my friends, stay safe and secure out there and hit us in the comments below to let us know what you'd like to know more about when it comes to information security and compliance. Hey, I'll see you on the next one where we get even more clear about what all this means.